Jean-Paul Gaultier, yes, really and truly an enfant terrible. As fashion reporter Susie Menkes, I believe I have been to nearly every single show. The crazy moment when men came out on stage wearing women's clothes. The idea of models of different cultural backgrounds. Perhaps that's the most important of all. Behind the madness, I always knew there was serious workmanship. Jean-Paul's haute couture was as superbly made as it was imaginative. Let's hear what he now has in store. Hello, Susie. Oh, How are Jean-Paul, you? Nice I'm to see you. So, so big pleasure. I'm so pleased to. I'm so pleased to see you. And do you know something? I've just been working it out. I think that I attended every single show that you did over how many years? 30 years? My longer. God. Hola, yeah, even longer. <laughs> That's fabulous. What I most remember is how crazy your shows were then in the early days. And you did things like having men wearing women's skirts, something yeah. we'd never seen before. And you had mixed race. You had models there who came from different countries. Mm-hmm. And now look at us. This is what is every day. You were a leader, you got there first. Is that how you feel? Well, I feel, in some way, I feel like pr- proud, yes, in the fact that I am very touched and flattered by, to see like uh, what I was feeling was in reality, uh, was the reality, I, I mean. Like it was not a mistake, it was not something abstract, you know. Because I think that in fashion, you know, that is the purpose to do fashion, you know, is like to feel the thing. I was lucky because I have very good parents that were very open-minded. And uh, even from a very, uh, not even middle class, you know, like more, more worker, you know, uh, society, you know, they let me do the job which was not a job of, uh, of, uh, for a boy. It was more for lady to make couture, to make, uh, yeah, fashion. And I felt that uh, I could be maybe myself, that I was like a little different. You know, I was a little rejected at school. So I always was interested by what was different, the others that were different, a little like me. It was so fantastic to see you at your ending show. I mean, not that it was a sad ending at all. I've never been to a show by fashion people that was such fun. You had everybody there. What's interesting to me also is that you are continuing in your way. You've invited interesting designers Mm -hmm. to um, take a go at being the new person to run the business. So tell me about what's going to happen now for this season. Alors, now this season, it will be like Chitos et Sakai that will uh, make the first collection, Gaultier, Paris, without Gaultier, Jean-Paul Gaultier. So uh, she, she will be the one, is the one I choose, you know, for that season. And I am very uh, happy because I, 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 she is very good and I think she was, I wanted her, definitely. When I saw the first thing she was doing, I think there is something similar with me. You know, she likes the same kind of clothes and she, uh, come on, she cuts them in a, and mix them and show them in a new way. And with her culture, Japanese culture, which is fabulous. It's interesting that you're, the idea of the enfant terrible, yeah. um, which was so much part of you, um, a lot of that was quite British. It was really more, to me, it seemed more as though it came from that London energy. And yet there's the other side of you that, um, I don't know, is it that you were always a little bit of a bad boy inside, or is it something, a game you played? I think, to be, uh, honestly, I am always like uh, real and authentic. I don't, I don't lie. Since I do my job, I have no reason to lie, you know, since I started to make fashion. So, what I should say is I have been always a little, like, in some way, rebellious. It starts with Santa Claus. When I learned that Santa Claus didn't exist, I say everything is fake. So, from that, it was the same in fashion, because I remember with Cardin, it was marvelous, I discovered everything. But after, when I went to Jean Patou, which was an old house, and Mr. Patou was no more there, it was like a very classical thing where everything has to be beige and gold, so that is the maximum of chic, you know? The chic à la française, a little, uh, truly a little boring. And arrived the punk movement. And I went to London. At that moment, the punk movement was so incredible, so, like a liberation, it was something social. And what I love about all about London is the mixed, the mixed of, uh, come on, at the same time, like very tradition, 
monarchic tradition and 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 the uh, liberation and uh, uh, comment the rock and roll and all uh, the music the movement the gothic type all that kind of things that for me it was like all the tribes that they were in London I felt like yes they express themselves uh, they express themselves and it's beautiful and I feel more like at home because in Paris it's like oh you have not that you know it's always like comme ça like it has to be nice on the... Well, I don't know. I rather, I rather love that side of Paris. I think that we, it's fine to have both. Obviously, you know, I'm British, but even with all the wonderful things it is to be English and including the fashion world, Britain does not produce haute couture. So it's only in coming to France that you see real couture with all the staff and with the workmanship. Still, France is the absolute head of haute couture. What's going to happen when people like you stop doing it? Do you think there's a future for it always? Yes, I think always there is future. Something else, it will go, it will come in another way. Maybe I think, anyway, there is like a lot of things that have to be renewed. Everything uh, with what happened just uh, now, I think it's a moment where everything can be rebuilt. So Jean-Paul, my big question is this, what are you going to do next? You have so many ideas, extraordinary ones, of all the things you've done in the past and what you want to do now. So now you've got all this time on your hands. You're no longer having to do 20 collections a, a year. So what are you going to do? What's going to be the Jean-Paul Gaultier next step? You know what? Is that because also of the English, you know, I, I will be jury of dance avec the, with the star. Ah. <laughs> Oh, really? The jury, <laughs> because the English love so much. I remember, you know what, one of the first times, because in France, you know, we don't dance that much. My father was dancing, even when he was very old, he was dancing with all the old ladies, you know, and they <laughs> loved him because he was making them dance. <laughs> well, now I know the answer of how I'm going to spend my years. I'm going to join your dance class. Perfect. Please invite me and let's go right now. Oh, perfect. What, cha-cha? <laughs> Anything. Anything. As long as I'm dancing Roomba. with you. That is the most difficult. No. Foxtrot. <laughs> voilà. <laughs> Let's go.